Arpit, I welcome you to this program, Success Speaks. Thank you, sir. As you know, this program is especially to take out the best of the success stories from the toppers. And since you have got All India 53rd rank this year in Civil Service Exams in 2021. So, I know it is going to be an interesting story for the audience for you, right? Sure, sir. Thanks a lot for having me. Uh, this is going to be a very interesting story for the audience because you have got your IS with 53rd rank in your fourth attempt. And initial two attempts, you could not qualify pre. Third attempt, you got Indian Police yes, Service. And now you are IS with 53rd rank. So the audience must stand by, listen to you carefully, how this journey all began and what all happened that you could not qualify in your initial two attempts in the pre. And then suddenly you jump to IPS and now to IS, right? Uh, sure, sure. Before we go to the success story, I would like the audience to know about your background. Naturally, they would be interested to know about you. So, please tell something about your family background, your education background and your journey in the UPSC. Uh, sir, my name is Arpit Sangal. I am currently 25 years old. I come from a, a district called Shamli, which is located in Western Uttar Pradesh. Uh, I belong to a businessman family. Uh, my father is a businessman. Then I did my graduation from IIT Delhi. I did B.Tech in Mathematics and Computing and I graduated in 2018. Right. And uh, soon after that, I started preparing for civil services examination. As you have rightly mentioned, I wasn't able to qualify the first two prelims. Uh, in the last attempt, that was my third attempt, I got All India Rank 239 uh, and I got the All Indian Police Service uh, as a service and this year I got All India rank 53 and IES is my first preference. Uh, Arpit, uh, before we enter into this understanding about the four attempts, one very favorite question with the UPSC is why do you want to become IES? You are also an IIT and you have got the best of education and also the degree. You had number of options to in India and abroad with lucrative packages. So why did you prefer to go for IES in place of going for such lucrative packages? Uh, sir, actually, I got uh, uh, a pre-placement offer after my third year in a very reputed company. But uh, I think the nature of the job that uh, IES or civil services gives you, it, give, it will give me a wide experience during my uh, life in the service. I will be able to uh, chat or I will be able to understand each and every sector of the population of India. And it will be more of a generalist job. I prefer this. I will. I want to see the India's India's social life, and if I could contribute with uh, my work to the society, then I think I would be very grateful. And also, I think by seeing the value system that my family has raised me in, I personally feel that uh, I was, uh, as we see the slavers, even the ethics slavers or the values that a civil servant should have. So I think I felt that I will be a right. Uh, candidate for this as compared to a job in a corporate field. So I was attracted to uh, in the Indian uh, administrative service. It is really very impressive to know your clarity about your career choice. And that is where became uh, so supporting for you all through your journey to keep you motivated. Arpita, uh, you could not get success in two prelims in your first and second attempts. And then you suddenly you started getting success from third attempts. So for your audience and the future parents, I would like you to analyze what was the really deciding factor in which, which did not allow you to qualify in the pre in two successive attempts. Uh, sir, the first attempt I gave just after graduation in 2018. I was not at all prepared. Uh, just 10 to 15 days before the exam, I was told by seniors to that you won't be given six, six attempts. So just attempt it. So that was just a testing attempt. I got very less marks in prelims. Right. I just prepared for 15 days. Now, second attempt was uh, my attempt where I gave it all that I could. But I think the major mistake were two that I did. The first was that I thought that UPSC is just a knowledge game. And that was a mistake from my side. I think UPSC is also about common sense and a wider understanding of things. Right. Mm -hmm. So first thing is this. and. Uh, uh, wider understanding of things. And secondly, I think 
whenever we are giving an exam we should build a temperament of the exam because eventually those two hours matter so here i made that mistake also somehow i mismanaged my time in the prelim so these two were the prime reasons for my failure during the second attempt and it was difficult because yes. i was prepared for mains also it was not easy uh, i think in general upsc journey is difficult then i gave my third attempt uh, it was also there were many disruptions because of covid but right. uh, thankfully i got into i cleared my prelims i made sure during my third prelims that i do i leave no stone unturned uh, so that helped me to even qualify the forest cut off during the third attempt so there i focused on multi uh, sector approach like knowledge common sense building a good temperament so i think that helped me in prelims in the third attempt very nice now uh, with your experience what would you like to suggest to the people who want to go for the first step should they try like you casually once twice or they should take it seriously from the beginning sir i think they should take it seriously from the beginning because eventually if you look at the mental uh, side of it now i am qualified so i can uh, say that it was okay for me but if we generally see when you fail an attempt it counts as an attempt right so that way you have some uh, issues so if you are not prepared then but there is a silver lining because upsc is a difficult exam some people even after studying think that they are not prepared not being prepared means not even reading the standard books right. i hadn't read even the standard books that's why i was not prepared but for all other people don't let your fear stop you from giving an attempt okay but ideally one should be well prepared and then should try for it very right yes, now how to remain motivated that's a very big question once a person disqualifies especially any brilliant student like you who has done it also so i have come across so many candidates earlier also in the among the toppers they take it casually in the ns attempt and many of them get discouraged that okay i could not qualify in the pre it means i'm not competent for that right so in this situation many people might have laughed you laughed at you also you could not make it the pre so how you kept your motivation level high and you kept going uh, so first is related to the people who are uh, seeing anything i think you should have internal motivation you should know why you are doing this uh, why why you are giving upsc civil service examination or why do you want to join the service i think a person should not listen to others however there is some effect of others as far as motivation is concerned i think let me keep it tell you straight forwardly that every day you feel demotivated before you go to sleep you feel a sense of guilt that i should have done better you feel demotivated motivated every day even after getting into ips if you are a i got into ips even then also i felt demotivated sometimes because it is the nature of the exam so first of all stop giving you guilt trips Gi- giving yourself guilt trips that you are feeling guilty that you haven't done enough so avoid that first then i think a good way to keep yourself motivated is by doing any physical exercise because it is eventually a chemical phenomena within our body there are certain good hormones that re- get released when you feel happy so person should focus on exercise secondly uh, a good way to keep yourself motivated is, is by seeing incremental changes in your preparation so when you read a book just feel good about it that you have completed the one source then to check yourself by giving test series you can see your progress so that is also a good motivator by giving uh, different test series and thirdly i think friends and family they matter a lot please stay away from those friends and those family members who pull you down right. who either say bad things about upsc examination for example there are certain people who could not qualify so they have a uh, they don't have a good experience of upsc so they might say that it is unpredictable mm. there is no use of giving an exam so i think you need to stay away from those people i think uh, uh, that way and talk to those people in your family and in your as in your friend circle who motivates you who respect your choice even after failure who respect your choice in this aspect my friends and family help me a lot very nice ultimately if nobody is believing in you that does not matter your own belief system should be a strong right yes sir and you should keep away from the people who discourage you and you have to keep working only on those things which really keep you up and up going into your journey that is very interesting right yes,
uh, in the whole preparation time management is also very crucial right how much time you should spend how much time you should give right so in this respect i would like to get your opinion how to manage the time so regarding time management uh, i think uh, first of all it is more about the quality of hours not about the quantity of hours for instance as i started the preparation when i was not able to get anything i used to study 12 hours but after understanding upsc and studying to the point i wasn't able to cross 7 to 8 hours uh, personally right. so first factor is this uh, secondly i think consistency is what matters you should not break your consistency uh, while managing your time you should study daily and make sure that at least 6 to 7 hours you are able to study in this case discipline helps you a lot if you can uh, keep a certain period of time fixed that you will study in these hours so that way it is it becomes easier so when motivation is down discipline helps you it is a famous saying that so i think being disciplined also helps and one way to manage time is by giving uh, test series regularly because okay. that way you are motivated also and those three hours you also understand how to use your brain at a maximum capacity if i want to just uh, let your audience know about your time table of 24 hours every day how much time you slept how much time you had other activities extra curricular hobbies and how much time for your serious studies then what would you like to say uh, sir first of all sleep is extremely important i never compromise on 8 hours of sleep very right uh, i slept definitely for 8 hours secondly my study hours were around uh, between 6 to 8 hours right but that were like daily so per, and those were very intense hours i uh, sometimes tried to study in library or in an atmosphere that is completely shut off from everything else with my mobile closed so uh, my brain completely got sat- got saturated in 6 to 8 hours then regarding hobby generally my i like to talk to people my friends and family members so in that that aspect i daily used to call my parents when i was outside and when i when i stayed at home i used to play or talk with my sister a younger sister so that helped me do after study hours very right mm-hmm. so basically you are keeping your balance routine for sleep exercises social and interaction and also for your study that is what plays important role sir i think it's a marathon it's not a sprint so in marathon you should be well prepared and it what counts is counts is how much you are doing in every hour and you have to do that consistently you cannot front load or back load it so i think that way you should focus on every each and every aspect that is very important it is not just one 100 meter race but you have to go in the marathon three stages you have to cross and it takes minimum one and half year since the day you start with this examination and somehow yeah. if you cannot qualify in the first second attempt then this can be a longer journey so it is better to maintain all the patience and perseverance that is very good uh arpit uh, where from to start is a very big question for the new persons or the beginners right you might have also faced this problem while you started the preparation so and what to read what not to read is also a very big challenge especially in today's time when there lot of overload of material both online and offline so in this situation with your experience what you would like to talk to your uh, audience Uh, first is how to where to start from i think just bring the ncrts to your home and start reading them by understanding them this will build your basic knowledge and basic understanding of things because as i came from uh, my college i was focused primarily on college i, I noticed that i have forgotten all, almost everything from my 10th class 
so regarding way from where to start i think uh, you need to start from ncrts just bring ncrts from 6 to 12 and generally people say 6 ncrts are not required but it hardly takes 2 hours to complete one ncrt so just read it to understand what is polity what is history what is geography what is environment after doing that go to the upsc syllabus and upsc previous year questions and then then go to basic books that are recommended by almost all toppers and okay. one problem that people face as you have said there is a lot of material if you go to a shop in mukherjee nagar or old rajendra nagar or you go to a web page with upsc material you will find yourself lost and there is a fomo fear of missing out that you might be missing out something but please stick to the standard sources stick to your own preparation stick to your notes don't get a fear of missing out and don't keep on uh, buying new materials especially when you are talking about ncrt books one very beautiful concept you came with that 6 to 8 standard it takes roughly 2 hours to complete one book but students keep thinking whether is they should read 6 to 8 or they should read from 9 to 12 so it is unnecessary confusion you might have forgotten the basic fundamentals so very nicely you have suggested that it is better you read and brush up what you might have missed and then you move forward with 9th and 12th standard also right there is always a or confusion also among the students regarding whether they should read with the old ncrt or the new ncrt what is your take on that uh, sir i think as far as 11th 12th ncrts are concerned i think they can uh, go for new ncrts because sometimes uh, since the pattern has changed it has been noticed in certain instances such as in the prelims question that question come from new ncrts of history so i think uh, don't get uh, very demotivated if people who have already started they can go on with new uh, old ncrts itself but people who are st- uh, starting they can go for new ncrts i think it's not a very big issue because we also face this issue old or new it's just one or two prelims questions here and there right and it is better because latest uh, editions are there in the new ncrts so data and facts and figures will be more up to date there with that can yes. be called that is very good uh did you also prepare notes because remembering so many things is not easy right correct so did you yes. did you have a practice of making notes sir as you said that remembering is not easy apart from remembering reproducing it in the exam is not easy yes, yes. if right. you are not preparing notes so eventually what matters is those three hours what is written on, on your answer script so unless and until you prepare notes you will be lost so i think my extreme focus was on notes i made very very highly crisp notes every topic hardly 3 to 4 pages and i made sure that i revise it uh, i think i have even got them pictographically in my mind i have re- revised them so many times and uh, i kept on revising those only because eventually the standard Uh, things are same there is nothing new the base on which the entire polity is based or geography is based is the same and upsc is also going to ask that only so i think note making is very important and uh, especially revision is very important and that cannot be done unless you have prepared your notes right yes sir uh, would you like to give some tips for notes making how to prepare notes yes sir for see there are two things prelims and mains for example if i take standard books then if i take lakshmi kant or in modern history if i take spectrum or in geography i take ncrts in those only generally factual questions are asked the thing that is conceptual generally you tend to remember those things if you are reading properly so for prelims focus more on factual questions after looking at the pyqs and in the mains aspect i think first go to the syllabus for starting point is syllabus you will find you can segregate certain topics while reading the syllabus then go to the previous year questions you will find that certain questions around 10 to 15 questions from 20 questions are easily predictable as far okay. as upsc mains is concerned so make theme wise notes start with for example if i take federalism you can start with uh, what are the unitary features what are the non unitary features then uh, what what are the general comments of the people regarding federalism what are the problems what are the solutions how to strengthen it so these are the basic question that upsc can ask 
ki right so please. focus on those basic questions prepare those notes keep on revising them later on add value to them by reducing their size also beforehand uh, looking at certain data points or certain diagrams similarly you can even uh, think of introduction and conclusions beforehand of those 10 questions which you will definitely see in the next day's exam for example i would say uh, in paper 3 security is mentioned so they will definitely ask question about border security they will definitely ask about left wing extremism they will definitely ask about cyber security so if you are prepared beforehand that reduces your time in the final exam as it is a very lengthy exam that's correct current affairs is very important in the whole of the exam pre and mains right now for majority of the students is a problem where from to start preparation of current affairs how to read newspaper what is really important in the newspaper for a candidate and how much time to give for that these are certain confusions so what is your answer for that so first is newspaper then i'll come to current affairs newspaper is that uh, it is a bulky thing so first of all when you are aware about syllabus and previous year questions that itself will give you a hint that what i should study for example if there is a money laundering case somewhere and uh, uh, newspaper will tend to write a lot about that case but eventually in mains they won't ask about that particular case they will ask about money laundering in general the best use of that case can be quoting it as an example right so you have you have to have that segregation in mind i think for upsc aspirants only around 20% newspaper is important now coming to the editorial editorial is important to build your broader knowledge so i think to build your knowledge uh, that way it is important now and you shouldn't give more than one and a half or two hours to newspaper now people tend to uh, research on a particular topic i think we are getting hired as a journalist not as an expert we should keep that in mind secondly regarding current affairs sir i have theory that generally current affairs is not must asked in upsc upsc focuses on com- contemporary issues that are there since a long time so don't go after minor facts as far as current affairs is concerned if there is a topic just try to understand uh, the contemporary part regarding it as i have mentioned in the money laundering case generally people tend to go after a lot of facts for prelims even if you uh, if we see the prelims paper if we have understood the newspaper com- correctly there is no need of those facts we can answer the question by understanding that is that is very true keeping the pre in mind as you have gone through the four pre and in initial two pre you could not qualify so for the candidate who is going to prepare now for the next year 2023 what kind of uh, suggestion you would like to give so that he can or he she can feel secure and comfortable to qualify in the preliminary examination yes sir first is the source of prelims what a person should study uh, regarding that i think uh, around 60% questions are uh, in the prelims are uh, those questions which upsc generally ask yeah. for example this year ashoka's rok edicts were asked or the polity questions or the economy questions we have to study those 60 uh, questions effectively while preparing for the prelims how that can be done look at the previous year question sec- section wise we will find that for example if i take the example of economy we will find that upsc focuses more on rbi's monetary policy as compared to the fiscal policy or yeah. as compared to the financial sector so when you understand this you naturally will have a knack of understanding things so focus should be on those 60 questions now looking at those 40 questions that are unpredictable for that we have to build a temperament of solving the paper how that can be done uh, uh, this should be done by seeing all the prelims the previous year papers as a whole now what generally happens is a person does the test series of a of an institution and they get certain biases regarding those questions or the way they have framed the question paper people generally think that examiner is sitting to give us a sad life he is trying to make us go wrong i think we should uh, keep that of our mind and just 15 days before prelims or 20 days p- before prelims stop doing any test series just pick up last 10 years at least 10 years pre- previous year question or you can do after to- 2013 when the pattern was changed and solve those by sitting 
for those one hour, one and a half hour, since you have already done those PYQs, it won't take much time, but you will understand that how UPSC frames the options. So that way you can, uh, these are the changes that I made. I tried to understand UPSC better. I tried to broaden my understanding of things and I tried to have a focus study on those topics that are more prominent to be asked. This is very interesting suggestion you have given. I found Chanakya's mock interview TV program very useful. Uh, the uh, panel of experts that they have is really very, very experienced and they did help me in, in, in trying to find out which are the areas in which I should focus more during my preparation. Uh, so that was very useful. Uh, what I found is that there's a lot of correlation between the kind of questions they ask you in the panel here in mock interviews as well as the ones that are actually asked in the UPSC interview. So I would uh, recommend that you should go through mock interviews as well and all the best to every aspirant and hope you all do very well in life. Uh, let me explain uh, the um, future aspirants on your behalf. What you have said is very interesting and very important that last 15 days it is good to practice with the, all, the original question of the UPSC of last 5 year, 10 years rather than to go for new new test series that is very so that you get a practice with the original question which have been asked there this is very important and of course the way one should prepare should be for the revision in the last hour so if you are preparing the notes that will be good for you to revise things and then practice with the UPSC question that is very important. Uh, Arpit, now let us talk about mains, right? The orientation is different in the mains. So, if I ask you to define what exactly is the mains examination and what they are looking for in a candidate in the main examination, what will you say? Sir, I think they are looking for a person who is generalist, who is multidimensional, who do not focus on a thing as an academician, who can place all the puzzles, uh, all the pieces of the puzzle to solve the eventual answer. So, that way, I think multidimensionality is a very important thing. Also, decision making on facts rather right. than on, on our personal opinions. So, that and an optimist also. When I write an answer, I can see the tone of the, that answer. Whether I am going for constructive criticism, I am being optimistic, or I am just a pessimist who is just finding out problems. So, that temperament also needs to be built. Communication skill, writing skill that plays very, very important role in the main examination right yes. now how is it natural that somebody has or it can be cultivated and developed according to the requirement of the upsc uh, sir in the writing skills i think uh, uh, let me share my experience i didn't want to try for upsc because i don't have good writing skills hmm. i don't have good subjective skills now later on i realized that it's not about writing skills definitely grammar you should not do a mistake in grammar but after studying so much you will have sufficient keywords that you won't need much vocabulary and your basic understanding will uh, let you flow through this journey. But you need to learn how to write. You don't need to write flowery things, but what are the expectations of an answer like introduction body or uh, giving justice to each and every part of the questions e equally and being rational. I think that is the part of writing practice, not uh, some flowery language or anything else. That is excellent. Actually, you need a very, very uh, to the point writing, simplicity, not to mix anything ornamental and you it must be very uh, expressive as per the need of the question. That yes. is interesting. Regarding uh, selection of optional subject, there is always a dilemma in any candidate. You are an engineer and what subject you have taken? So, I took maths as an optional. Maths and optional. turn out well for me. Okay, so what was the reason of taking maths? Of course, you might have read in your engineering also, but uh, yes, sir, it's, an, it's very interesting that uh, uh, I did my graduation in mathematics and computing from IIT Delhi. Right. And I came to UPSC because my friend told me that you will have 500 marks for UPSC in maths. So I wanted, I came because of maths in UPSC, but eventually I got 262 marks last year and 257 marks this year. So it didn't turn out that well for me. Yes, uh, it's... but as you say that uh, while choosing the option, first thing is that it should be high scoring, and please do don't go about from the market news that this 
this year this option is scoring good this year that option is scoring bad you should just see the syllabus and, and see certain books if you are uh, okay with that secondly you should enjoy while uh, certain enjoyment is necessary while studying your optional you, you, want should, you should not do you want to say the subject must be of your genuine interest yes you should not feel out of place while studying that subject so you okay. should feel uh, contentment for example i also tried to study for indian forest service mains exam so then i realized that if optional is not something that you like then it becomes extremely hard for you to study so there are certain uh, optional that are very technical in nature and binary in nature for example math physics either you get full marks or you get zero marks so i think a candidate should be extremely careful in those optionals for example if i am unable to do a 20 marker in math i won't get any marks or i will get 2 3 marks but if i am not that sure in a sociology optional i can try to score more than 5 or around 7 8 marks so technical subjects be very careful while taking those technical subjects arpit uh, which which general studies paper you got the highest marks uh, i got highest marks in gs2 i got 119 okay so especially i would like to get inputs on paper 2 from you for the future aspirants okay. what is their paper 2 and how one can score good marks in that paper so in paper 2 first i would i think my strategy is generally same for all the papers please go to the syllabus see the pyqs from that you will understand 10 to 15 uh, topics that are all always asked now also identify those topics then there is a general difference in the way of answering polity question governance question and international relation question to develop that habit that what is more important in polity answer for example in polity answer articles supreme court judgments constitution these are more important in governance answer general philosophy behind that governance uh, for example there is citizen charter why there is citizen charter so that understanding is more important and similarly in international relations so first segregate those three parts then try to identify those topics which are prominently asked uh focus more on constitution throughout the uh, subject and incorporate certain diagrams that can be uh, drawn in that and i think uh sources should be limited then you can just go to google and see there are certain blogs from certain web uh, upsc coachings so they give crisp notes so you can just add on from that especially i would like to know from you about the international relation part of the things what are important there in that particular section and how to prepare that for uh, sir as a, uh, in the international relation i personally feel that student give a lot of time to it but it's not asked that much i think around uh, 50 to 70 marks generally international relation is asked or i think it's 50 only 210 marker to 15 marker uh, but if you see an editorial page you will find that daily there will be two editorials for international relation first be conscious about that give every topic that amount of time which it deserves because eventually you have to clear the exam now in ir go by the syllabus they have mentioned that first focus on neighborhood you should know india's neighborhood policy okay. then important countries are there such as uh, our relations with us or our relation with russia similarly we won't be asked about our relation with a particular african country general as a block it will be asked so divide the world into those five six major countries then areas middle east central asia after that go to the multilateral organizations un being the prominent one and later on to those organizations which are more prominent in news such as quad was asked this year and apart from that focus on the general trends of how foreign affairs are panning out such as there is shift to indo pacific there is general rise of nato after the ukraine russia war so if you can have those 10 15 points of understanding where our international relations are going that will be of help i think very true now uh, let's move to the interview part you have gone to interview very successfully how many marks you had in the first and the second interview sir i had same marks i think uh, it was around 168 marks in both the interviews 168 that is there now if i ask you what the upsc members or the board wants to see in you so what will you say uh, sir uh, one is honesty Comple- there should be complete honesty second is confidence uh, and third is balance of judgment 
I think these three things are so much overused that a candidate thinks that these are cliche. But personal at personal level, I feel that these three things are the most important when you talk to the panel. So uh, there should be focus on these things. And you can also try to prepare beforehand the type of questions that can be asked. Be polite in the panel. If you think you have done a mistake, please don't for, uh, forget to accept that. And I think I personally have a feel that eventually you can't impress people who have already served for 40 to 50 years in professional life. Arpit, now if I give you this chance to speak to the audience from your side without asking question, okay, what points you would like to give to the people who are going to go for the mains now and for the people who are will be appearing after a year in the preliminary exemption okay, when they are going first time particularly, what suggestion would you like to give them to as your tips for success? Uh, sir, in the mains examination, uh, one thing is that give equal importance to all the papers. Eventually what happens in the end is uh, there is a high possibility that one or two papers might go wrong because there are a lot of papers. So give equal uh, focus on to every paper. Also don't uh, miss your GS because of your optional or, or your optional because of GS. Please focus on them equally. Thirdly, I think I have said that innumerable number of times that syllabus and PYQs, you should keep on going to them every time you get a, a something like I am unable to understand what UPSC wants or things related to that. Even in the essay paper, they have given a syllabus or how they will evaluate you. Please go to that. Think that of as the Bible. Please go to these two things. Thirdly, note making. Note making will help you to reproduce those things in the paper. Also focus on your strengths. For example, if I'm writing an essay, I might have certain strengths that uh, others don't have and I won't have those strengths that others have. So don't feel that guilt factor or don't judge yourself. Focus on your strengths and work on your weaknesses. So I think that is a general suggestion and please focus on your health in the journey. I think uh, that is one mistake that I did while preparing for UPSC civil services. I didn't focus much on my health and I personally feel that my efficiency would have gone better if I would have focused on health. So please focus on health. And sir, I would like to add one more thing that UPSC exam is not the end of life. There are many people. Eventually they will select 180 IAS. I feel that more people are deserving than those 180. So please don't make this uh, exam as a matter of life or death. There are beautiful things like ahead in the life. So please don't uh, go into depression or anxiety when you don't qualify for this exam. And moreover, if you are preparing sincerely for this examination, your competence level increases a lot. So you are prepared better also for anything you want to do in your life. And exactly. you, will not, you will not miss out. So it is. Thank you very much, Arpit. I am sure by listening to you and in conversation with you, a lot of points have come for the future aspirants and they will try to utilize these experiences for developing their strategy and they will customize for themselves. So thank you very much for honestly sharing all your journey. Thank you. Very much. Thanks a lot, sir, for giving me this opportunity to give a candid interview like this, where I could speak my mind openly and directly. Thanks a lot. God bless you. God bless you. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to never miss an update.